seeds I've got from Chilton Seeds. And thanks to Indestructibles uh, online, someone gave some really helpful advice on how to propagate these. So I have tried in the past to propagate these about three years ago, and I've got three, um, three little saplings which I'm going to plant out a little bit later this autumn. So what they've said is, um, get your seeds and sprinkle them like so, and then you can check later on to see when they've germinated. So all I'm going to do is just pop them in like that. You can actually see quite nicely <coughs> through the tissue there. So I'm going to get these uh, and I'm going to put them in clear bags. There we go. I'll just leave these in the fridge slightly open like this. Um, it's the 19th of October now. That's one. I'll do another one now. <laughs> Love this bit. Height, 90 metres spread. 32 metres. Not in my lifetime, but uh, might be there for someone else to see. Let's see which ones I can pick out now. Okay. They've got quite a few, and some of them have gone all over the place. So I drop him in there. Trying to get the root pointing downwards. And then just firm this soil around him. And give him a little bit of cover. This is, um, quite uh, therapeutic actually. So unfortunately this one dug its way through the tissue and in pulling it out just snapped it so that's a pity. So I've literally just placed him below the soil with a bit of space there so his roots got a chance to burrow down and get some moisture. So now I've reached the weekend and I'm having a big splurge on planting these little um, germinating sequoia seeds up. And you can see that they have really put a sprout on. storing them upright like this, when they germinate the seed will naturally go down. Before I put them back in the bag, I'm just going to give them a little spray just to keep their humidity levels up to help the germination. So after a couple of hours of transplanting today, um, I have got with what I've left inside the house 41 little saplings. Um, so I've noted the ones which are just sprouting little shoots, which I think should have quite a high success rate from this point uh, with these little markers here. You can see there's one of the little dudes there. Um, other ones are a bit more advanced. So that's a little update. We'll see how they get on later. Ah, the giant redwood tree. If I had to choose one as my favorite, this would be it. This is the General Sherman, and this is in Sequoia National Park in California. It's over 2,500 years old. It's 83 meters tall and measures 11 meters at the base. It's the world's most massive tree. Its cousin, the Coast Redwood, doesn't have the girth, but it certainly has the height. This is Hyperion, whose location is still kept secret, but it holds the title of the world's tallest tree at 115 meters. Here in the UK you can find many fine examples of the redwood, young in comparison to their Californian ancestors, 
Most were about 160 years old when in the 1860s William Lobb brought across a big batch. The tallest at 54 metres can be found at Benmore Botanical Gardens in Scotland. Closer to home at Salhouse Hall in Norfolk, there are four fine examples of the giant redwood, which I enjoy daily on my dog walk. Two one-acre stands of coast redwood can be found thriving at Senno Hall, Geist in Norfolk. Tom Cook, descendant of the world-famous travel agent Thomas Cook, planted these in 1964. And although they're only 55 years old, these are already reaching heights of over 33 metres. Now what is worth noting is that these have already self-sown and you can find saplings up to 3 metres tall growing at their base. In 2015 I had a go at growing a batch, this was my initial attempt at growing a batch of giant sequoia. Um, from about 60 containers with three seeds each. Unfortunately, all I had left over that successfully grew and survived were five. Two I gave away, and the other day I planted three out together in a formation of three. So the ones I've got indoors now are doing really well. They're about three, uh, four centimeters high. And you can see they're looking pretty strong. I'll show you how they compare to the ones outside. This one unfortunately has died for some reason at the top, um, so I'll replace him with the new seedlings I've got germinating now. But one thing you'll notice, which I think is quite interesting, I'll try and do a close-up for you, is that there are these little white things that basically go crazy and jump around when you spray the water. Uh, I think they're called springtails. Uh, now these are the ones I've kept in the shed, so temperature-wise, um, I've got a little gauge in here and Minimum it's been down to is just above freezing, about 0.1 of a degree. Uh, no, sorry, 0.4 of a degree. Maximum is about 20 when the sun comes in here. Um, basically what I've learned is that you need somewhere to put these in uh, a light area, but somewhere that um, is warm as well, because the ones inside are germinating much stronger. I mean, these are okay. And you can see there's a few here which haven't quite made it. This one's okay. He's okay. That one should be okay. But the, the growth here is much weaker than the ones I've kept inside at about 19 to 21 degrees. Um, so what I'll do is I'll take out the ones that haven't germinated. And the interesting thing actually is that of the ones which I thought were perfect little germinators, uh, where they've just started to shoot and they're easy to transplant, if you look at them, they're not really doing much. I'm gonna leave these to see if anything does happen. But the ones which I've got the little tickets in here, uh, over there, I mean, this, this one and this one have been okay, but as a percentage, most of them haven't taken. So I guess you could say that if you're gonna put them out in the cold, um, get them when the shoot's a bit longer, the, the root's a bit longer rather than just sh coming out uh, as I showed them before. So if you're interested in raising trees from seeds, uh, then this is a must read. The Forestry Commission have produced this uh, booklet called Raising Trees and Shrubs from Seed, and it is so full of useful information. I have literally been poring over it. It talks about the different types of seeds, and I'm not gonna bore you with it, but if I say recalcitrant, intermediate, and orthodox seeds, once you've read this, you will be enlightened. But what is also really, really useful is at the end, it's got this appendix which lists uh, 100 of the UK's most common uh, trees and shrubs and um, how to treat the seeds, uh, whether you need to scarify them, whether you need to stratify them, uh, whether you need to freeze them, how long for and when to start. It's really, really useful. So I'll put a link to this in the notes. Uh, happy reading and I'll bring you an update soon. Thanks for watching.